Welcome to this brief screencast of our second abstract data type we're studying this semester, the stack. So what is a stack? A stack is a stack of things, like a stack of plates at a buffet, the Pez in the Pez dispenser, or little red disks on top of a spring in this uh, graphic. So what are some of the principal characteristics of a stack? Stacks are last in, first out, so you push something on the stack, the next thing pushed on will be popped off before the first thing, so last in, first out. Uh, stacks don't have a size. You cannot ask a stack how many items have been pushed on, and the reason you can't is since you can only access the top of the stack, you can't get to the things in the middle like we could with a list, and we also don't have really the concept of how deep it is. If you want to know how many items are in a stack, you have to remember how many times you push things on and how many times you pop things off. You can't ask the stack. So that leads us to our stack interface. Very simple interface. It has four methods. Boolean empty, which allows us to determine whether or not the stack is empty. It will return true if the stack is empty, or false if there's a top on the, there's something in the stack. But we don't know how many items, we just know it's empty or not. The peak method looks at the top item in the stack without removing it. So you, it returns the top of the stack without affecting the stack. If the stack is empty, it will throw an empty stack exception. The pop method removes the top of the stack and returns it. Uh, again, if the stack is empty, the pop method will throw an empty stack exception. And lastly, the push method, how we push things onto the top of the stack, we push element onto E element onto the top of the stack, and we will return the element that was pushed onto the stack. So the four just four methods: empty, peak, pop, and push. And just like in our list abstract data type, we're going to have two implementations. We can use an array to store the data, or we can use nodes to store the data. We'll talk first about the array stack. So we use an array to store the data, the items on the stack. It's uh, reasonably simple. You have an array. You keep track of where the top of the stack is. You put things in the array, and you push them up, pop them off the stack. Um, the problem is with array implementations, the array is often larger than the number of items in the stack. So you have some sense of wasted space. You have empty bits, parts of the array that aren't being used. So let's show you the implementation of the arrays stack. So we have our array data that holds the elements, and we have our int top, which is the index of the top of the stack, and you have a choice to either say that's the next empty place or that is the top item of the stack. In my example, I'm going to use the next empty spot. Um, so I create my array of E's and then I indicate that the top is zero, saying that's the next spot that I'm going to stick things in. So here's my array, here's my top. If I were to choose top to be the top item, I would initialize top to be minus one, indicating that there is no top item yet. So what does Boolean look like? You just check to see if top is zero. In this case, top is one, so we have something on the stack. If we were using the top, pointing to the top item, we would check for minus one. So now top is back to zero, it, the stack is empty. The peak method checks to see if it's empty, and we're just checking that top is zero. We could, it's called if empty. Uh, then we throw a new empty stack exception. Uh, else, af after we do that, we will return the data at top minus one because top is the first empty spot. So if top is one, we'll return data zero. And notice we don't affect top so that the peak did not change the stack. Well, in pop, we again check to see if it's empty, throw the exception, and then if it's don't throw the exception, we return data at top, or minus minus top, which return decrements top, and gives you the thing that's smaller than top, so that will return the data at zero. And that's, we've done it, we now have got an empty stack because top is zero. Now, if we do a push, we can check to see not if the stack is empty, but if the array is full, then we know that uh, we need to reallocate. We have to grow the array, copy all the old values into the new array, and then assign it back to data. Um, 
So now what we do is we just say data at top, because that's the next empty spot, is equal to element. So we assign the thing at top, and we increment top. So that's the next, we're now pointing to the next empty slot. And then we return the element that was pushed onto the stack. The second implementation is a linked implementation. We use node, nodes to store the data. There are um, no wasted space because we only create nodes for items on the stack. Uh, but it is more complicated because our node structure has a space for data and a pointer to the next node. Um, so again, we have to have the node class. Uh, it simple singly linked node uh, has the data and the next. To create, we need to remember where the top of the stack is. That's the node that points to the top of the stack. And then we want to create an empty stack. So by definition, if top is null, the stack is empty. There's nothing there. There are you no know, nodes, so that it's empty. If, if it's empty, to check for empty, we check, say top equals null or equal equals null. If top is not null, then there's stuff in the stack. Uh, again, we don't know how many they are. We don't have to worry about anything. Um, but if top is pointing to something, then the stack is not empty and it should return false. Peak, we just check to see again if top is or if the stack is empty or top is null. We throw an empty stack exception and we return top.data, not affecting the stack at all. In with pop, again, we check to see that the stack's not empty. Then we get the data from the stack. And since we're popping the stack, we need to traverse top to top.next. That will move it down. And then we return the value. And now that node is no longer pointed to. So it will be garbage collected. And the stack now is one smaller, pointing to the next thing, the next, the new top of the stack. Push, we have to create a new node to store the data. We then insert the element. We set its next pointer to top so that it's the new top. Well, it's not the new top yet, but it will be the new top. And then we got to update top so that it points to this new node. And then we can return the element that was pushed on. And we are done with updating the stack. Again, a big O of one operation because we just create a new node, set it up, and move top. And we're done. No looping, no nothing. So both the array-based implementation and the linked node-based implementation, push and pop and peak, are all big O of one operations. So what are some useful applications for stacks? Because last in is first out, it's very nice to be able to check if something's a palinome. You push all the letters onto the stack, and then you pop them off and see if they match the same, because it reverses things. Another nice application is to check for matching parentheses so every time you see an open parentheses you push it on and then when you see a closed parentheses you pop it off and you check to see if that's the right type of bracket or parentheses so we push the square bracket on we push the thing the parentheses we see the closed parentheses so we pop it off we see a closed square brackets so we pop it off and we see a closed parentheses, and if the stack is empty at the end and they all matched, then we have matching parentheses. Thank you very much for your attention.